on North Miami, the insurance has increased on our on that property by five thousand a month. Okay. All right. All, right. All right. We're doing this podcast. We got Scott back on it. Um, we're also going live right now on Instagram. Uh, so what we're going to be talking about today, well, to get into this is the investment market here in Canada. Yep. yep. Particularly, obviously, in our local market here in Windsor. But tell me a little bit about what you're seeing out there and literally what we just even spoke about. Yeah, yeah. so the purpose of this podcast is we're, we're going to be talking about the uh, deal we got going on in Phoenix, which is yeah. uh, a banger relative yeah. to what we're seeing in the local market. Yeah. Um, so Dan and I were chatting before the, the episode here, and it was just kind of like, I haven't had an investor client buy anything, single family, duplex, large multi mid-sized multi anything for five or six months yeah and you're an investor focused and i'm an investor focused agent i haven't bought anything myself other than the miami deal was the last uh the one that we did that was the last one you've done that was the last time i bought a, an are investment you serious property. yeah yeah Holy and, and the fuck. reason why is because like like i'm looking every day actually yeah. i'm just the numbers aren't working right? yeah yeah and, and i haven't when was the last time i bought something the last time i bought something was probably about in, yeah, five in months Canada, ago, six like, months ago. Yeah, yeah. I bought. So what I did, what I bought was, I bought a, um, I bought a home that was on a double lot that I'm going to end up developing, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? Splitting off, putting in, putting a, you know, probably a duplex with an ADU in the back. Love it. And uh, and renovating the home and putting an ADU in that, or either. Uh, building up on that home because the foundation can support it. Yeah, Something yeah. along those I'm not, lines. Yeah, I'm not saying there's been zero deals. And, yeah. and the I only do. Re- the yeah. only reason why that deal works is because I can develop it. I didn't. Yes. Yeah. It, the deal doesn't work. Yeah. Like at all. That That's a good point. Yeah. You got to add units. You, you got to be doing do value add. Yeah. Um, splitting off a lot. Uh, all that stuff. Yeah. And I've looked at a couple things myself. Like yeah. with vacant lots or yeah. severing a lot. All that. Those have uh, intrigued me. And long term, I'm still very bullish on Canadian real estate. Yeah. But as we always talk about, we don't buy off of appreciation. We buy off cash flow. Yeah. And if somebody presents me a deal that doesn't cash flow right now on the purchase price or on, or on the purchase or very close after the purchase, then I'm not interested, yeah. right? And of it's course, we're hard. always stuck with the uh, biggest hindrance of all, which is you can't get the tenants out. <laughs> so I, I, yeah. like I might, it might be a good deal if I get the tenants out, but you know, uh, in Ontario, that's just yeah, not, not, it's even, a risk that that's difficult to and, take And not on. even necessarily getting them out. It's yeah. when the lease expires, raising the rates only by the amount that the government tells you, Phew. you can you raise rates by. Which is one quarter the rate of inflation, right? 100%. Inflation was like Fuck, 10%. that's a stretch. Yeah. They, one quarter. They, they, they well, what's it now? Two or 2.1? 2.5 for, for this year? Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's not bad. And inflation was 10%, but you're still it's just not, lost. Not bad. Yeah, you lost seven and a half percent. Yeah. So yeah. it's a uh, it's a little bit uh, ridiculous now on the larger stuff. If you got 10, 15 units, you could do cash for keys a little bit more easily. Yeah. Get the rents up and then increase the value of the property based on the cap rate. But small multifamily banks don't value on cap rate. No, they value on comparable sales. Yeah. So like unless you're playing in the million dollar range and then willing to take on you know quite a bit of risk and time and effort to get the building turned over. Yeah. You're you're just on the sidelines and that's why a lot when of when you say million dollar range, what are you even talking about? You know, two, three million dollars, ten plus units, yeah, uh, I mean, or commercial grade where you go and you get into cap rates, right? Six plus units, yeah, I guess. That's still fucking. Which is uh, that's another thing, density. right? When we, I agree. When we compare <clears throat> this stuff, the, the large multifamily to the the same stuff in Ontario, it's like it's garbage. It's the numbers are ridiculous. Yeah. Like, so we can ho- kind of hop into. Okay, so we're talking about why we haven't really been pulling the trigger locally. Yeah. Um, not that there's no deals. It's just way harder to find. You yeah. got to like think really outside the box. Whereas we, we start looking in the US and what do we find? Like turnkey cash on cash return of like- Yeah, it's crazy. What, what's the cash on cash return? Yeah, on ca- cash on cash return on the Phoenix property that we've got going on right now. It's, it's, it's in Midtown Phoenix. We're looking at an average over five years of eight and a half percent. Eight and a half percent. What is it off the purchase price? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, like day one. Oh, day with one. Rents, uh, let me see. Rents as is. Yeah, give me a second here. Yeah, so this one's interesting because it's at, you know, it's basically at market rent for today's uh, uh, market. Yeah. So you don't have to go in there and do a bunch of turnover and fully renovated as well. So they bought this building, um, renovated it, gutted it to the studs, just leased it up, right, in the past few months. It was, it was, uh, they got their certificate of occupancy uh, in November. Yeah, and it's already yeah. fully leased up. Yeah, about ninety-five percent. Yeah, seven point four two. 
Okay, so, so that's year on one, the purchase. Yeah, year yeah. one target cash on cash return on purchase is 7.42. Mm-hmm. And how many units is this? It's 23. Yeah, I'll tell you right now, if I could go out and buy a 23-unit building in Ontario uh, with a 7.5% cash on cash return on the purchase, yeah. that's fully renovated, doesn't need any CapEx. None. Because it's, everything's done. Yeah. I'd be a buyer right now. It's in, it's in Midtown Phoenix. It's five minutes from the Phoenix downtown core. We're buying it. According to purchase price, we're buying it at a 5.82% cap rate. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I haven't seen that. Anywhere no, here. and and, uh, and and you know, and we're we're predicting anywhere from you know on the high end, depending on how much money you actually put into the deal. On the high end, you know, you're looking at uh, with some moderate upside, which the Phoenix MSA and Midtown in particular, which is a submarket of Phoenix. They're looking at 10% growth over the next five years into 2027. That's fucking po- huge. 10% population. Population. Growth. 2% a year. 2% a year. Um, that, that's mind blowing. Yeah. Like to, when you hit double digit, when you hit when you hit double digits over the course of five years, that's big. Yeah. That's a big growth. Well, factor. You, you look at uh, 150 markets. Two or three of them might have a growth rate. Maybe yeah. at that at that. And level. not only that, it's it's not like it's not fluff growth. You know those links that I sent you with like all of these fundamentals and, and economic game changers coming into the market yeah. in terms of like massive employment coming in. That's fucking yeah. huge. So we'll talk about those things. One of the things that you you mentioned so earlier before is I like, even get oh, into that, ahead. like we're, t- <laughs> we're before I even get into that, we're talking about, you know, at the highest investment level, we're talking about, uh, you know, upwards of, you know, 270% total ROI on this deal. Yeah, after five years. After five yeah. years, like so if, that's you, with, if you look uh, at a five-year return, yeah, and then like you know, fifty percent annualized ROI based off five years, fifty yeah, percent annualized. It's, it's insane. It's like, insane. How the the fuck? good deals I look at locally, I I usually come up with around twenty-five to thirty percent total total annualized ROI. Yeah, yeah. So that's almost double uh, what I typically see here. Yeah. And one of the things that you talked about, right? We we why are people moving to uh, Phoenix and Arizona in general? It's a desert. Why don't people go to the coast? Mm-hmm. You brought up some really good points. Yeah, touch on what you're seeing in the Florida market. So, so don't get me wrong. Like I, I love the Florida market. Let me fucking tighten this thing up here. It's kind of annoying. Don't get me wrong. Like I love the Florida market, and uh, I was looking. I've been avidly looking in Florida. One of the problems that we're seeing in Florida, and thank thank God we got into the fucking North Miami property before like way ahead of the curve number mm-hmm. one we got ahead of uh before the market popped there number two uh we got ahead of all of the major um value add in terms of bumping rents significantly like the rents on that property have turned over at like 40 percent higher than what they were like yeah. that fucking building value add. from and within one year we added probably three to four million dollars in value to that property in one fucking yeah, year yeah. one year some light rehab to the units very light increasing the rents yeah. like you said are 40 yeah. percent. still a ways to go by the yeah, way for um, sure so uh yeah we probably got maybe 20 20 percent more rent to uh, mm-hmm, uh mm-hmm. to turn over but here's the risk with florida yeah so florida the risk right now is well i don't, I don't know about risk but this is what is really tightening up cash flow in florida right now is insurance premiums the last hurricane that rolled through, it, it, it devastated, you know, the, uh, what was it? What would it be? The West coast of Florida. Yeah, and Fort um, what's that? Like the Fort, Fort Myers. Yeah, and Fort that, Myers, the Tampa, coast, all that really. stuff. Not Tampa. Uh, Naples, yeah, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, insurance premiums have skyrocketed across the, uh, across the state. So right now what you're seeing is because of that happening, rents haven't caught up yet in order to you know, catch up to the increases in expenses on insurance premiums. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's really, it's really making cash flow tough right now to justify buying in Florida. Um, so you're you're running numbers on all these properties, and like when you plug in insurance, it's yeah. like, there goes your cash flow yeah. a lot of the times. Right? Hundred percent. So so buildings. one of the things that are you know a big advantage of what happened with North Miami is literally getting ahead of the curve, getting in at such low rents. You know, identifying that that property was an amazing location, and even in a location that was gentrifying significantly, and then seeing the value add with the low rents and taking advantage of that, increasing the rents and aggressively increasing the rents. Um, thankfully, because if we didn't do that, that property would be losing money. That's how bad. So it's a, gone, a lot of people right now in Florida, uh, they're they're buying they were buying property, and because of these insurance premiums. 
in the due diligence pre- in the due diligence period or during the due diligence period, insurance brokers are not even quoting. Uh, the, the, you know, sellers, selling agents are not even adding pro forma insurance premiums or costs into their OMS. They can't even do it because it changes so fast and so rapidly. Mm-hmm. They don't want to try. They don't want to predict something that they have no control over. Yeah. So, so, so talking to a bunch of Florida agents and trying to like you know get the lay of the land there and you know get some information about what's going on in the market they they won't even touch insurance right now they don't they, they're fucking staying far away from it mm-hmm, they're mm-hmm. kind of throwing in preliminary numbers of what they've seen on other properties you know uh within the the the, sh- the short past i guess but they're not fucking touching it yeah they're like they're not they don't want it they're scared of it they don't mm-hmm, want to mm-hmm. try to predict anything and that's becoming a really big issue on a property like what we're what we've got on lock on uh uh, the Platon Place property in uh, in, Ari- in Phoenix, Arizona right now, we were quoted uh, maybe like five, $5,200, $5,300 in, uh, for insurance for that property. The equivalent premium in Florida right now, you'd probably be looking at like forty to 50000 Oh, man. Yeah. So That's, that'll give yeah. you an example. It's a deal breaker. It's, it's, a, de- yeah. it's a 100% it's a deal, deal breaker. breaker. So I'll give you an example. On North Miami right now, the insurance has increased on our on that property by five thousand a month. Five thousand. Five thousand. So think about that. If is if, that double? Um. Is that double? It, yeah. Yeah. It's so pretty. It's pretty close. So so when you actually think of what's going on there now, I I here's another thing too. I do expect that to taper off. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. One of three things is going to happen. Number one, the government's going to step in and say, "Calm the fuck down, insurance companies." Number two, more insurance companies are going to come from like the East Coast, West Coast, whatever, and say, "Okay, now we're going to play in Florida now." Mm-hmm, okay, mm-hmm. because right now nobody wants to touch Florida, mm-hmm. right? Or um, rents will just have to come up yep, yep and yep. that and, and one of those three things is going to happen i think it's going to be a, somewhat of a combination of all three agreed, agreed so um this is only a temporary thing i think rates will come down things will settle down the government might step in rent because you, you can't have a situation where um rents are catching up so much to cover that cost it's just prices everybody out of the market yeah you yeah. can't have that situation happen so yeah. the government's going to step in say everybody slow the fuck down and then It'll be affordable again, but at, as of right now, it's stripping yeah. away the ability to cash flow. And then because of that, it's also stripping the ability to get decent leverage, right? Because now you're having to put down so much capital in order to even develop or create the cash flow that the property needs to service the debt. So it's it's creating like this fucked up perfect storm yeah. in Florida right now that, yeah, everybody's got their eyes on Florida, but the shit doesn't work. Yeah, and that's from the for the most so, part. I mean, you know, yeah, I'm sure there's some stuff that works, but what I'm seeing come up, it's just not. It just doesn't work. Yeah. So on the business side, that's one thing. But how about also on the uh, anecdotal side? Like if I'm, let's say, I'm looking for a vacation home somewhere. Mm-hmm. I'm looking to move to a state. Right. I'm in the Northeast. It's cold. I want to move yeah. somewhere. Maybe I say, hey, uh, first of all, the insurance premiums are pricing me out of Florida. Yeah. And that's that's also with single family homes too. It's not oh, just bl- fucking- Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And number two, I don't want to deal with hurricanes. Yeah. I don't want that risk. Maybe yeah. I'm just going to go somewhere in the Sun Belt where it's nice and warm. Yeah. Phoenix, Arizona, I'll get myself a nice place with a pool. Yeah. You have the communities just like Florida where there's a yeah. pool in the middle or whatever. It doesn't yeah. matter if it's on the coast. It's probably a little bit uh, more affordable than yeah. your major cities in Florida like Miami and whatnot. Yeah. So I think that just that kind of anecdotal- fundamental of like yeah. people maybe wanting to avoid the coast for that risk level. Yeah. Like I wouldn't want to avoid the coast, but, but yeah. a, lo- a lot of people would, right? For sure. If you're 60, 70, 80 years old, looking to retire somewhere, maybe you just don't want to deal with that drama, right? And the bugs 100%, and all that stuff. Yeah, so, 